Okay, let's move to Cosmin. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for uh, for this opportunity uh, to be part of this panel. And um, my my presentation, basically, I don't have any slides, but my presentation will be a shameless um, advocacy for nuclear energy. Why 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 it's shameless? Zero oh no, no, no. <laughs> zero, zero carbon. Zero carbon. I mean, I, I I'm I'm proud of it. I, that's why I'm very proud. <laughs> so. Um, I'll start with um, I'll I'll start with some figures and basically today today's realities I think they call for immediate action and based on IEA data that was vehiculated here, energy consumption worldwide grew by 2.3 percent in 2018 alone, uh, nearly twice the average rate of growth since 2010. So we've seen we're seeing an increasing um, um, demand. Uh, for for energy, um, as a consequence of higher energy consumption, uh, energy-related CO2 emissions also increased by 1.7 percent at 33.1 uh, gigatons of uh, CO2. Therefore, we are now we are nowhere near the Paris Agreement. And uh, to be honest with you, um, we will be very far away from it for a long period of time. As an important percentage of CO2 emissions are energy related, uh, the pace of transitioning then becomes even more difficult. And from my experience in the nuclear industry, two major variables need very fast addressing. Investments in clean energy sources and related financial campaigning, be it campaigning as a PR uh, initiative supported by the governments to bolster investor confidence in, 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 in uh, these investments, or as Leila very well indicated earlier, uh, coming up with uh, risk hedging uh, mechanisms to make the opportunities attractive enough in, in today's uh, um, capital competition. Um, the World Energy Outlook um, estimates around $1.1 trillion to be invested in nuclear power by 2040, which means approximately 46% in nuclear power output. Even though the WEO estimates an increase in nuclear power investments, globally, nuclear generation will go below 10%, and far less than the required output of nuclear production as per the sustainable development uh, scenario that was, uh, that was uh, shown previously by uh, Monsieur Appert. So, and I'll take a little bit of, of a look at Europe. Um, based on the EU directions of the 2030 framework for energy climate policy, there is a need, a need, at least at the European level, to reach the targets of decarbonization through means of technology neutrality and common efforts for the application of um, efficient support mechanisms in areas where market challenges hamper major investment projects as a sustainable transition to clean energy. So this is where I am. I'm a strong uh, advocate for the development of nuclear energy as an important contributor to a stable clean energy mix and as a solution for the baseload of a clean energy mix. Um, and obviously this is, cannot not only be achieved by new build and long-term uh, long operations of nuclear power plants refurbishments, but more so by extending innovation into re research for generation four projects, the new type of uh, nuclear reactors that also allow for flexibility and allow for p possible hybrid nuclear renewable systems that where you can have a small modular reactor coupled with uh, a, a, a solar panel and two windmills, and they can balance each other out um, very, very nicely. Um, and Romania, I can tell you very much, endorses this approach. That is why they're supporting the R&D project for a new uh, lead-cooled based uh, reactor, generation four reactor. That's why we're looking at new, other new technologies, such as the molten salt reactors in, in France or new scale. In, uh, in the US. Um, and that is why we're part of the clean energy, uh, clean energy ministerial approach, uh, the Nice Future Initiative, uh, that promotes 
the benefits of nuclear and the, the, the it's a branding an international branding exercise to brand nuclear as green energy and I think that's part of the reality that we need to that we need to face um, and to endorse that I'll make a quick uh, allusion to an MIT study that was uh, to decarbonization that was launched in 2018 I believe already uh, which adds um, Nuclear energy is a firm source essential to achieving a deeply decarbonized electricity sector. For most regions, EU included, meeting the 2050 targets requires a mix of resources, mainly firm resources, fact which should be fully accounted for in decarbonization policies and meeting targets. Policies that foreclose a role for nuclear energy directly impact investments in nuclear energy and directly increase the cost of decarbonization. Policies that support decarbonization via a single source directly impact not only the cost and pace of decarbonization, but wholesale markets, generators, energy systems, and end consumers. And I'll invite you to, to, to look into the study because they do a very, very good um, demonstration of, of, of this uh, thesis. And out of that, I've extracted uh, from the World Nuclear Association um, the world's, um, how the world would look like in terms of emissions without nuclear. And in 2018, uh, the world was supplied 2,563 terawatt hours of electricity from nuclear sources. If we didn't have nuclear power and say we s we've um, um, replaced it with coal, <laughs> I didn't say lignite, I said coal. Uh, we'd have an additional emission of um, 2,276 million tons of CO2. If we were to go to natural gas, we'd be looking at 1,278 1, uh, extra million tons of CO2 per year emitted. So I think that that says a lot. Um, and if a few years ago financing was the last thing to consider, I think now it's actually the first. Because a few years ago we were thinking about depolitization, how if we shut down, we don't shut down. Security, I think we've, we've proved that nuclear safety and nuclear security is, is evolving very much. And with the new technologies, we're, we're, we're right there. Um, and with this realization under COP24 and a lot of the governments looking, turning back and reconsidering nuclear um, as a green source of energy and branding it as such, or taking policies not for a green source but low carbon energy, which is probably the more scientific way to put, uh, to frame a policy, um, then it's up to us companies to get to do our job. And unfortunately, we cannot really raise a lot of money for nuclear if we don't have state, if we don't have state support. Um, because de-risking nuclear is paramount. And that is from the initial stages of a project. Um, and it has two, two, two potential risks that need to, a, a nuclear project has three risks that need to be looked at. The first one is construction risk which we've seen recently that a lot of projects have become over, um, have become over budget and not necessarily in time. Um, a lot of the large companies, uh, sup service suppliers such as Westinghouse or SNC-Lavalin can do, um, even, um, even on a number of the uh, South Korean, uh, Chinese uh, nuclear companies are pulling out of the lump sum turnkey EPC model. Um, we know that a lump sum turnkey EPC contract even led to the reorganization of Arriva, which says a lot about where we are in terms of construction. Um, and that, that has more to do with the way in which we, we, we manage costs, in which the services have become more efficient, and governments need to be uh, part of the solution or financial institutions need to be part of the solution to come out with surety bonds or, or ways to 
um, to finance also, also through consumer um, um, driven needs, this type of new, uh, the, uh, new builds. And here, for example, I'd like to put in, in light the, regula the regulated asset based model and the contract for difference model that's being used by Hinkley Point um, in, uh, in, in the UK. The second part, uh, which becomes more interesting here, is uh, regulation. Regulation and political risk. I think this is probably the number one, uh, the number one risk that investors, that is pushing investors away from, uh, from, from nuclear projects, outside of the construction risks, and from taking equity as, uh, in, into nuclear utilities. And this is mainly due to the fact that um, nuclear is highly regulated. Uh, it has become also over-regulated, if, if I were to say so. You need about, um, you need about um, a pieces, a, a nuclear spare parts weight in paper to move it from one point to another. So I think that we've, we've, we've exaggerated a little bit on, on the nuclear safety side. We're, we're not saying that the processes are, are bad, but the, the bureaucracy around it have made it uh, a little bit unpractical. And with each bureaucracy that's being layered up, you hire more people and you, you know, print more, uh, more paper, and I've actually that drives OPEX even higher. So obviously that needs to be, and it has a financial impact on the project. So here is more of um, a government's approach to how, how, they, how they manage bureaucracy. But it's also depoliticizing because say you've invested in nuclear, you had, you had an equity stake in a nuclear power plant that was put into function in 2008 in Germany. In 2010, you have just finished your construction. You, as a fund manager, you're looking to get a 20-year return on it. And 2010, boom, second year of operation, your plant is shut down because of a, of a, of a natural uh, uh, disaster that had unintended uh, consequences and didn't necessarily realify a problem with the nuclear industry, was spun off in a, in a political campaign, and and, and then created a, a shutdown for nuclear, not only in Germany, but mostly in Europe, because we have to, we have to be pragmatic about it. I think that up until two years ago, um, the European Commission was afraid to say uh, the N-word, and here we're talking about nuclear. And secondly, uh, we were also had a very difficult time. Um, you know, we, we've had a full industry shutdown. So the new focus should stem from aligning economic welfare with long-term interests of the society because we're talking about decarbonization, we're talking about security of supply and maintaining our lifestyle. We still want to be, have zero emissions, but as you know, uh, Professor Masuda said earlier, we still like it to be cool in this room. And I think that's, that's, that's uh, very important. And yeah, so. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lots of uphill battle for the nuclear. I, I cannot agree more. It's a it, it's a tough after Fukushima accident. Uh, yeah, it is really challenging. Mm -hmm.